What's happening, people? Welcome to another episode of Natty News Daily. We've got a very, very special guest on, Mitch Jarvis. <laughs> What's up, my man? How are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. Good. Thanks for having me on the podcast. No, oh, man, I'm very, I'm very excited. We tried to do this. I was looking back through our messages. We tried to do this before, but uh, unfortunately, we couldn't line it up. But now that no. uh, you know, we were able to make this happen, I'm, I'm super excited. <laughs> yeah, now we got are. him as champ, so that's yeah. timing's <laughs> right, man. Yeah, this this matters more now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I guess, man, for those, because you, you don't have a massive social media following, so maybe for those that don't know who you are and what you're all about, give a, a brief insight into who uh, Mitch Jarvis is. Hopefully we'll help yeah. change that. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> um, yeah, so my background was in gymnastics, and I've been a, I was a gymnast from the age of five years old. I was sort of talent scouted um, when I was in school, and I went through sort of the British system on that. So... I started kind of going through to like national squad and competing as a junior. Um, I had a few injuries as sort of a youngster and then it was kind of fizzled out and just became a hobby. Um, But I still managed to, whilst I was at university, I managed to sort of go off and represent GB um, at sort of like the World University Games. Um, GB, did you? So Great Britain. Great Britain, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I managed to get all the kit and go off and represent, you know, like Great Britain and... um, sort of yeah get the t-shirt and all of that yeah um and then and then i kind of was forced to stop gymnastics through a couple of injuries so i snapped my acl in my knee and then two weeks later completely blew up my shoulder um whilst i was still trying to do the rings oh Um, jeez holy so two injuries two surgeries later it was kind of a it was kind of telling me my body was telling me that gymnastics was was done my body had had enough of that um But in the rehab process on that, I started lifting weights more and I started getting into the whole sort of bodybuilding side of things. Um, And this was 2017, 2018. Um, And I mean, I'd always had relatively big upper body because I was a gymnast, but I had sort of legs like drain poles. Um, (laughs) So that's an interesting interesting start to to getting into lifting, like through rehab. You don't hear, hear many people say that. So that's kind yeah. of a cool like transition, like, you know. It was. I mean, there's sort of, there's interviews with Arnold Schwarzenegger saying that, you know, it, it, what is it you turn to when, when you get injured or, you know, in sport, when things go wrong, you turn to bodybuilding. And a lot of what I was doing, it was all, it was basically just variations of squats um, right. for my knee and just making sure I could strengthen up the muscles around it and things like that. So, yeah, I started getting into it in that. And then, I'd say about 2019, I was starting to look at maybe competing. And I was thinking, well, what, what would I like to compete in? I've always been a natural athlete because I've always you know, been drug tested. And I've always liked the idea of a level playing field. For sure. Uh, so the, the natural feds for me was kind of where I wanted to start. And then, yeah, 2020 hit and everything got cancelled. And I was kind of looking at doing a show maybe in the summer at some point. They all got postponed. Um, luckily, we managed to do the UK DFBA. Um, show in October yeah which because there was no qualifiers I kind of walked straight into the finals um, on that one I was entered in the so I entered myself into the men's novice physique as yep. well as the men's novice bodybuilding because okay. I wasn't sure if I had enough mass for yep. bodybuilding <laughs> um, at three weeks out I went to a posing workshop where I met Lee Williams who's now my coach uh, and he said don't worry about the board shorts he said we'll take you out of that category and then he also gave me the option to switch from novice to open because he said you know you, you might not win it you probably he said you probably won't win it but it will challenge you and it will push you yeah um you know got to show day managed to come out with the overall on that one um which which meant that i got the wmbf pro card um and that was your first show on, that was my first show first time on stage man that's um, nuts but, um, when yeah, did you so, when did you kind of general timeline you when did you kind of start lifting when when did that rehab when was that rehab process going so yeah I mean I, I had been doing some squats before that so I, I had once I'd say 2015 that summer I realized that I was I was coming to the end of gymnastics and that my body was a little bit out of proportion and I'd like to grow some legs so I thought right what do I need to do I need to start squatting and pushing up the weight on that um and And you're a very proficient squatter too if you if you haven't if you don't follow mitch already you know that 
I, I see a lot of your your squatting and it, it's pretty. Yeah, it's my so my wife is a G, a Great Britain weightlifter, so she does sort of snatch and clean and jerk. But you walk into a gym with the weightlifters and you, you have to squat properly. You can't yeah. be um yeah you can't be half repping or anything like that. So um <laughs> they I, I yeah I learned to squat with the weightlifters and I think that kind of shows I guess in in technique in that. But um yeah it I mean does. I. I started squatting. I was squatting three times a week, heavy, pushing it, and just really just chasing progress in the lifts. Um, and I think that was when I'd really noticed that my legs started to grow. And I'd I've been doing leg press and like, you know, when you go and do a leg day and you do a few extensions and a couple of lunges, but hard heavy squats, I think, was the the real sort of change for me. Yep. Uh, but that that started, I'd say 2015, 2016. I then had the injuries, I then had a bit of time out. And then I came back and when I came back from the injuries and the surgeries, it was, that's when I more looked into the whole bodybuilding side of things as opposed to just training for fun. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. after 2020, obviously worlds was canceled and everything else was kind of, that was done. So I had one show. Um, and then after that, a little bit of downtime, um, I had COVID, then the gyms closed for a bit and things like that. But then I was always kind of targeting coming back this year because I didn't really feel like I had a full season. Yeah. Um, but obviously having taken a pro status, it was always going to be a big jump up. So for sure. I knew I had a bit of a mountain to climb uh, for that one. But and yeah, then I did sort of quite a, a much better prep with an actual coach to, you know, sort of guiding me on what to do. Um, and yeah, and then we competed at the weekend. That was the first show. Got another one in a couple of weeks. And, and that's me. So what were the requirements for holding your qualification with WMBF then? Because so, uh, yeah, they were competing. Um, yeah. yeah, they they basically said because of the Typically. COVID and the fact that you couldn't compete, yeah, um, that they would carry it over for a year. Um, but obviously, I'm not going to be able to compete this year either. So I, I'm probably going to lose that status. With but you're here. but you're an IMBA pro now as well. Yeah, so we we moved across with UK DFBA. Yeah, um, and so we're competing in IMBA PMBA worlds. Which yep. I mean, for us in UK, it's actually it's really handy because we wouldn't sure. have been able to get to Vegas probably anyway. So um, the the route to get there would have been an absolute nightmare, and I would have been at work struggling to get time off off school um, to go go to America. So for me, popping over to Romania to do the World Championships is a bit of a bonus for sure. Um, so let's, let's talk about like your training and stuff, describe, you know, how your, your training methods, your split, what you kind of typically fall into for training. Yeah. So I switched it up a bit after I'd finished competing last year. Um, I noticed, and you can kind of see it in the stage shots from last year, that posterior chain hamstrings, things like that needed a little bit more work. So I had the quads were there. It was, it was the hamstrings and that sort of development. So I, I sort of expanded out to more of a bro split type thing. Um, and it's, I, yeah, so it's a five day split per week with two rest days, mm -hmm. but I've got two leg days in there. So I've got one leg day where it's quads and calves, one where it's hamstrings, lower back, and then calves as well. So I've yep. got squat day and I've got deadlift day. Yep. Um, yep. Sort of nice. And I try and focus. They're the main things that I kind of go into the gym and think, I'm, this is what I'm going to overload. This is what I'm going to push. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then obviously everything else goes to complement that. Um, and then the other three days, you've got back and biceps, chest and triceps, and then shoulders, and then I hit arms again. Yeah. Um, just because I feel like it's it's nice to hit them twice a week as well. Yeah, yeah. That that kind of split is kind of is something very similar to what I'm like already looking moving forward after prep to yeah. like transition into because I think um going back to that kind of like bro ish split would be kind of fun for a little bit. Cause I haven't done something like that in so long and, you know, having arms on their own day, I did this past off season and definitely helped for sure. Yeah. Made a big That's change. It. I, I did that for a while. I expanded in the off season. I went out to six days a week and I had arms on their own shoulders on their own. But oh, okay. as I was, as I was in a deficit, I actually was yeah. like, I'm not recovering from this. So yeah. I put them together because I didn't need to do arms on its own. Yeah. when I was sort of getting into prep but um yeah I've, I've found it works pretty well for me perfect prep wise what's your typical process with that what's your timeline wise are you a meal plan are you a macro guy what's what's all the details right so 
last time round, I basically just got myself because I wasn't sure the shows were going to happen. I got myself to a point where over the summer I was lean enough that I could compete in a couple of months. And my first prep was a seven week prep for that show. Um, and I just, yeah, I basically just got leaner by eating in a deficit, tried yep. to keep training, lost a load of strength, lost a lot of <laughs> muscle. Um, and I, but I was kind of just winging it myself and making up as right. I went along, reading okay. bits on the internet. But um, this time around, we started at, I think it was about 19 weeks out. But we did have, with the reason we started so far out was because I was getting married um, and then I wanted to be able to have a break in the middle. Yep. Um, and that was at about 10 weeks out. So I had, I think it was about 10 days where I didn't do any tracking of food. I was drinking um, alcohol. I was, <laughs> I didn't go to the gym once. We went hiking a yep. lot on the honeymoon because we went to Scotland. Nice. Um, but I, I didn't go into a gym and lift weights. And actually, when I came back from that, I felt so much better and sort of ready to go for sure. For part, part B of prep. But um, yep. yeah, so I did it a lot slower um my food didn't really change at all uh i was on two and a half thousand calories pretty much throughout the whole thing and then two weeks out he upped me to 2600 and then one week out he upped it again so last week i had 2700 basically because i was ready early and he said i don't want you to lose any more weight yeah um so that's kind of my maintenance calories at the moment um and then he's given me basically a list of foods that i can have and then a calorie allowance for that food kind of thing so okay. I'm, I'm eating a certain it's, it's almost like a meal plan but I'm a little bit flexible with it yeah um and because of my job I don't necessarily have the chance to eat at the same times each day so I just it's wet between lessons and things whenever I can fit a meal in yeah because um, you're a teacher right yeah so school teacher so sometimes you'll be teaching for two and a half three hours in on the trot so you got to eat just before that eat yeah. just after it yeah and just get through <laughs> but um <laughs> which towards the end of prep is pretty tough but yeah for it's, sure. it's not been too bad but do i you felt much like, better do you teach a certain grade or is it a certain subject matter what's like how does teaching work over there for you yeah so i'm i'm a science teacher um okay. and ke chemistry is my specialist subject so i teach chemistry um and it's in like high school or secondary school yep yeah. Um, so the kids are between 11 and then we've got a sixth form. So it takes them up to 18 years old. Um, but I'm also I'm ahead of year for the 16, 17 year olds. So I sort of I'm in charge of that year group and overseeing them. So, yeah, that, that was something I'd started in September. So I kind of work was a bit busy. I was on prep and trying to just get through it all. <laughs> How'd you I'm handle a juggling. bunch of moody teenagers on prep? <laughs> that, that was my next question. <laughs> It is a challenge at times, but I'm also yeah. pretty moody on prep, so I kind of counteract them a little bit. <laughs> do your like kids and stuff know about you bodybuilding? Uh, yeah, some of them do. They've, I think they've seen seen in Instagram. They don't interact with me or anything on it, but I think yeah. a few of them know it's there. And yeah, yeah, that they they don't really talk to me about it too much. But a couple have said it's it's quite cool. But um, yeah. I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's an interesting thing about how things are now versus like when I was in school like yeah obviously you're you know you're on Instagram on social media and your your, your kids can see that and you know you sh there's sh really kind of shouldn't be that relationship there on social media it's kind of I don't know yeah the world's just changed a bit I think it's just it's um, it's different yeah I would never put anything out on the internet that I wouldn't be happy for them to see or yeah. you know yeah yeah and yeah that's that's kind of how I live or how I do it. Um, people get in trouble for doing all sorts, you know, oh, for tweeting, sure. tweeting stuff or putting this or that. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, as long as you just censor whatever you put on the internet, and I wouldn't want to put anything controversial anyway. But yeah, yeah, and yeah. everything, everything they're gonna see is all related to like the sport of bodybuilding, yeah. right? So it's like, oh, you know, you know, Mitch is shirtless. So it's like, no, he's posing at a competition. Yeah. Like it's not even the same context, right? But you're right. People, other people out there like tweeting drunk photos and posting stupid shit it's like okay there's a very much difference between what is on mitch's social media yeah. and what would be on their social media right so exactly yeah, yeah. so sure. that's the way i see it but um, oh, for sure yeah and then i mean in terms of macro split i the big difference this prep is that lee ramped up my protein so my protein last time i think i was on 180 grams per day which is relatively high but 
it's, it's high enough for me sitting yep. at 77 kilos. Um, but he ramped it up to 250 grams oh, wow. straight away. Um, and and you, you notice the difference. It is, I know it's more than they say that you need and there's studies and this and that, but you do notice the difference from, from eating more. And yep. I think actually that's been a big factor and that's not come out of the carbs. So my carbs have stayed the same. That's still about 250 to 300 a day. Wow. Um, but my fats has gone down and that's just because we're picking better foods. Yep. So yep. Eating cleaner and there's, there's a lot of food, big volume of food. So I don't feel too hungry. That's good. That's good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's what was your weight change over the course of prep? So I was about eighty-seven kilos at the start of the year. So yeah, I, it, it didn't take me long to rebound off the first show. I just couldn't stop binging. But um, I, I enjoyed Christmas, and then after that, I kind of tidied it up a little bit myself and got down to eighty-five. So I took a couple of kilos off just by eating a little bit, a little bit more sensibly. Um, I started prep at 85 kilos and then I, the day I sort of competed, I wake, woke up and I was 75.8. So pretty much 10 kilos yeah, over 20, 20, 20 weeks. 20 pounds. Yeah. 22 pounds, yeah. I think. Yeah. 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 That's reasonable um, then over 20 weeks. Yeah. And I, cause I dropped down to um, 80 kilos. So I did that pretty quickly. And then the wedding came about, yep. I had 10 days off and I came back and I think I was about 82. But that, that weight came off quite quick again. Yeah. A lot of it was just water retention and things. So once I cleaned up my diet, that you know we went back down to 80 and then we did the last sort of stretch um, before the show. What's, uh, what's your dynamic with your wife on prep? Because she's obviously not – she's Olympic lifting. She's not bodybuilding. So how, how does that go? Because I, I always enjoy this story because – my wife and I are very, very different when it comes to being on prep now. <laughs> yeah, it's um, I, I tend to because I do I tend to do most of the cooking anyway, um, sure. and I, I tend to make sure that she has the foods that she likes in the house, and, and we can do that. Yeah. I am a bit grumpier. I am a <laughs> bit. I've got a shorter fuse, but, yeah. um, but she um, so I say at the end of August, she snapped her Achilles tendon. Oof. Um, yeah, so she had a surgery on that. She's still in a boot, sort of hobbling around. But wow. it's, there's been a lot of um, extra things that I've been kind of you know, doing just to make sure that she's all right. Yep. Um, so it has added an extra challenge to sort of prep. Um, For sure. Trying to do that. And obviously, she's grumpy because she's stuck in that inside and can't go to the gym. I'm grumpy because I'm not <laughs> eating. We've, we've just both got to remember yeah. that it's, it's a temporary thing with prep. For um, sure yeah <laughs> yeah in Look, 20 we, in 2019 my like now wife my girlfriend at the time we yeah. we prepped for the same show together it was her first time and i this is probably my fourth or fifth show by this time and she was like you know i, I want to do it i want to you know experience it for myself i want to get an understanding for what you go through and i was like awesome let's do it and it, th that was a challenging time for sure because it's like you know she needs to meal prep i need to meal prep we're in the kitchen together we're moody you know someone knocks something over and then it's just a huge like <laughs> but now like obviously she she's very much understanding of what i'm going through and knows like ah uh, this this is not him talking right now he's just really tired <laughs> yeah i'm yeah i guess i'm quite lucky because Liv understands the sport and i think yeah. that's it if you've got someone that understands and gets it yeah um and, she, and she's had to make weight for her weight category so she's had to drop weight but Yep. In weight in weightlifting, they try and do it by not necessarily getting as lean as possible because that won't help with their strength. Yeah. They just try and manipulate things like water. Um, and it's, it's like a crash diet very quickly yep. where you can then bounce back once you've weighed in. So it's, it's a different approach, but for sure. she understands not eating you know, your dinner for a night and feeling really, really hungry or not being able to drink water for half a day or something like that. So yep. Yep. It, it is, it's nice to have someone that gets... And doesn't just think you're a weirdo but. yeah yeah i think you i think you need someone that is either in it or has a very good understanding of it because if not yeah. you're just asking for trouble yeah that's true but yeah. so with like you're still so relatively new in the sport what what's kind of the the goals you've set for yourself i mean right right out of the gate you turn pro you win this past weekend your your overall title you know what's what's the goal here man I don't know. I mean, obviously, I would like a world title. I think a world championship title would be would be nice um, in an actual federation. 
and I mean, we'll see. Maybe, maybe it's something that I just want to come back and do the same shows with the UK DFBA yep. um, and then the PNBA again. Um, a natural Olympia would be cool. I think that would be really nice to do. Yep. Um, maybe when we've got more certainty with travel uh, and hopefully I can sort of get myself over there to compete in one of those. Maybe next year, maybe the year after, we'll see. Yep. Um, but I don't know. After that, I need to have a think about what I want to do long term i've always liked the classic physique division in i guess in the untested feds um i i would always choose to do it as a natural i would never never yeah. want to take anything i i, I think because of my background and just because of what we both believe in you know Liv yeah. and i i think we, we wouldn't want to do anything yep um, to compromise that but yeah i mean you, you can see guys like bob waterhouse for um, sure turning pro in in the ifbb with sort of these crazy physiques as a natural. And I, I quite like the idea of that maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I need to have a proper think about it. How old are you again? So I've turned 30 at the start of this year. So I'm not that young. <laughs> That's still pretty damn young in my opinion. But <laughs> it's still young in bodybuilding terms. So yeah, my, my body's pretty, um, it's because I've only been really sort of lifting weights for a few years. My body feels good. Um, as a gymnast, my joints were absolutely battered. Everything hurt, everything ached, things were snapping. Um, I've never felt in my life, really, since I was a kid, I've never felt this uninjured. So yeah. I, I you know, ache within, within the muscles, but my joints feel good um, and everything feels pretty fresh still. The, the IMBA has classic physique, correct? They do. So... Um, now I know the UK the FBA does not. So what would be the process if you wanted to do classic within the IMBA? Would you have to find a different show? I think I think as a natural, I would stick to just bodybuilding. I think as a natural okay. bodybuilder, I, I like I like bodybuilding as a category. I just think that I wouldn't necessarily be able to carry the size to do that in other federations that aren't right. tested. So Right. It, for me, I like I like the fact that the look in the untested classic, okay, um, sort of division. But but in terms of the natural federations, I don't think I'd worry too much about okay. classic physique. So if you were to do like an IFBB event, you would do classic. Yeah, I, I think okay. I'd just do better in it as well. Yep. I think I've just not got the size, and I'll never have that size because there's a, a reason for that. Yeah, we we have over here like a the Canada Pro Qualifier, and they have classic obviously because it's it's affiliated with the ifbb and you can get an ifbb pro card through them and you can yeah. do classic or um open so it's, it's cool. very yeah it gives you an option to spend depending on your shape and structure right and especially as a natural yeah. guy you can kind of you know if you have good structure you can kind of play to either field right yeah that's it so maybe i'll look at doing that in the future but for now i mean all i've been working towards is a world championships and you know, I'd like to go there and do well. What date is that this year? It's this so it's weekend or next weekend? Next weekend. So it's um, 12 days away. Is it the 30th of October? Okay. So that's yeah. pretty, I mean, you got time, but it's a pretty, pretty quick turnaround, you know. After yeah. Finals, so, was, so, yeah. As soon as I stepped off stage on Saturday, it was back to fish and potatoes. It wasn't, you know, I wasn't yep. sat there having a celebratory meal because we couldn't afford to, to sort of lose that time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, it was straight back on prep. Now I know, I think Ben's doing that again. Yeah. Is there any other names that you're kind of scoping? I'm not sure. I've not really, I've kind of kept my head down with it all. Yeah. Um, I knew Ben was planning on doing both. Um, so I knew that he would be, I mean, especially the first one, he'd be sort of my big competition um, going into that. And he, he was very transparent with his prep. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. So we were at, yeah, yeah, and it's it's great to see he's he what he's built and what he's brought to the stage is it was unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. He's, he's an amazing. incredible athlete. He's yeah, so talented, and he's also a lovely guy. Um, yeah, very you nice. Know, chatting to him backstage and and sort of before and after the show, he's just he's a really really nice guy. Yeah, I'm looking forward to you know spending more time um, as we sort of go as a team to to worlds together. That's but, awesome. Yeah. That's something um, I, I've really noticed. Um, and I mean, I competed at the Mr. America a couple of weeks ago and just a lot of these guys, especially the, the, the guys that are really good, you chat with them backstage. A lot of them are the, are the nicest guys. I mean, I met like Phil Ricardo, like the yeah. warmest hearted guy, like 
awesome. And just, you know, I, I've just noticed that at least in, in natural bodybuilding, which is interesting because bodybuilders have kind of this, I don't know, this uh, stigma about them that they're kind of, you know, self-centered, you know, but I don't I know. I definitely I've, notice like locally at like the amateur ranks, it's a little bit more like everybody's just kind of scoping each stuffy. other out. Yeah. Just a, you know, a bit of a chip on their shoulder. Right. But I, I agree with yeah. you. Anybody that I've like had this podcast with, that's like, you know, a, a high level natural bodybuilder, like yourself or Ben or, you know, Wattis, like, all so nice oh my god yeah <laughs> yeah brandon same thing yeah, yeah. incredibly yeah. warm backstage and yeah you know all the guys are just i mean a lot of them have competed together for years and know each other and, you know yeah, yeah. but it's, it's been really nice for me to walk into a sport and be and be accepted and you know for it to just be such a nice environment yeah and you can talk and sort of train and you know everyone's willing to sort of help each other it should and, be yeah, to meet guys like that, it's it's great. Yeah, um, it's it's really nice, and I feel like I'm I'm really lucky to have joined the federation that I did, um, and to have had the experience that I've had so far. Do you have any aspirations of, like, regaining a WMBF pro card and and you know playing both federations or no? I'm not sure at the moment. Um, I know there were reasons that UK DFBA moved from WMBF. Um, and I, you know, I'm, I'm quite happy to sort of be attached to UK DFBA and stick yep. as, as one of those pros because we were given the option. It would kind of just outlined what, what the score was. So we're now, I think, technically, we all moved across and we, we became UK DFBA pros so that we could then join the IMBA, PMBA. Yep. Um, and to be honest, like, you know, the natural Olympia, I quite like the idea of doing that and sticking as, with that as sort of my main goal in natural bodybuilding. Yep. Yep. So you you have worlds here in a couple of weeks, and then is that it for the season, or do you have anything else? That's going to be it for the season. I was hoping to maybe have the natural Olympia, but we've. I mean, the borders they're they're opening them, but there are yeah. all sorts of things going on, and it keeps chopping and changing. And yeah, I, I can't get the time off work for that, even if it was sort of a guaranteed thing at this point. So um, yeah, for me, I'm just going to say I'll call it after after worlds and. And we'll look ahead, hopefully, to a little bit more certainty going forward. Yeah, if you did even like a full year off season and then did like the Olympia 2023, you'd probably transform your body and really make an impact, which would be sweet. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's one of the options. That's what I'm considering. Yeah. Um, I mean, because I wanted to do an off season, not even a long one this year, and then they cl- shut the gyms until April. So for four months, I had 80 kilos on a spin lock bar and a few elastic bands. And that's, that was my training. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I kind of just kept my body ticking over until the gyms opened. And then I went, I had about two months to really push it. And then I started dieting. Yeah. Um, but I think the, the main thing for me was that I prepped much better this time. I had a coach that was able to kind of guide me through that. And as a result, I've, I barely lost any strength and as I think as well, I didn't really lose too much muscle. That's um, been a huge uh, talking point. It seems to be is like really fighting to, to stay strong throughout prep. You know, you, yeah. you're talking about it now. Ben's talking yeah. about it. AJ talks about it, you know, and, and a lot of people, you know, tend to think that it's just, you know, over the course of prep, I'm just going to get weaker. So why, you know, why try, but yeah, you know, look at the physiques you guys all brought to stage this past yeah. weekend. And you can see that, you know, you're still so strong, right? You're still a, you're still a bodybuilder, you know, you're yeah. not just a, a dieter. That's it. Yeah. I mean, I, for me, it was always a case of, I want to be able to, even in the last week of prep, walk into the gym and squat double body weight for reps and reps and reps. And as my body weight drops down, double body weight squats drop down. So yep. I was doing 200 kilos. I'm now only doing 160. Yep. So it's fine. Cause relatively, it's, it's pretty similar. Yeah, I'm, you're still I'm moving to, weight. Yeah, that's it. And I think I still feel strong when I'm training. I've, I've not, I wouldn't say I've had a bad session or prep. It's kind of, I've always made sure that that's been something that I've really, really pushed. Yeah. Um, and then focusing on recovery, because that obviously takes a little bit longer um, and a little bit more TLC, just yeah. to make sure I get all of that right. But For sure. Yeah. Um, before we go, because this is just something I, I want to start to ask people. 
what what are your kind of little habits or like tricks on prep like like you know, how often are you posing or like, do you have any pre-bed sleep things? Like, are there any little things that you do specifically that have like, you know, kept you going through prep and made it effective? Yeah. I mean, for me, um, with posing, for example, I tend to do that because of, because I'm out all day at work. I tend to get to either do that first thing in the morning or I tend to do it last thing at night. Right. Um, but the lighting in our house in like the lounge and stuff is quite dingy so it's quite like sort of low lighting and yeah especially when it gets to this time of year like the sun's not up or anything like that so when I was posing and when I was doing my check-ins the lighting was terrible um and I think I saw I think it was Nick Walker saying that whenever he was doing his posing before the Olympia they purposely picked yeah, bad they lighting. Do the worst lighting yeah and you yeah. pose hard um and that's that's it and I was I was posing I was like I look small I look soft this is bad and I just kept doing it, looking in the mirror and thinking, I need to really, really focus on squeezing, squeezing and getting the most out of it. But um, yeah, I mean, getting up at 6 a.m. and then doing three rounds of posing for 20 minutes and really, really holding them and trying to just feel everything. Um, and even from quite far out. So I think last time I only posed properly. Once I'd, you know, at three weeks out, been to a posing workshop and learned how to do it. I, that's when I kind of cracked on but this time it was like at the start of prep I was posing yeah every other day at the start and then every day for quite a long time and I think that that makes a big difference how you yeah. present your physique for sure. um, and I for me the best thing for me was getting a proper coach that has got experience in the sport knows how to how to kind of work with me and you know tweak things like my diet or posing you know going and seeing him regularly and him even the day of the show he was giving me tips and things that I need to do yep. to improve that and show off what I've got a little bit better um but I think that's been a big thing for me is yeah just just practicing posing and not being lazy with it because you can it, if you pose lazy in the morning you're going to pose lazy on stage and yeah you're just not going to be used to used to it but that's been quite a big thing awesome. I mean for, in terms of diet I just I make sure I hit the, the calories and the macros that I need, but and with the right foods. But other yep. than that, I don't do anything too fancy. Cool. Cool. Awesome, yeah. man. Well, I appreciate you coming on. I'm glad we were able to do this. Yeah, no, it's been great. Um, and thank you for having me. It's, it's always nice to talk about bodybuilding. Yeah, man. Um, we're, sp we're spreading the good word here at Natty News. So uh, yeah, what, like what you do is a really, really good job. And I think it's something that, that sport has needed for a while. But no, thank you for that as well. Thank you. Awesome. Where, uh, you where, look can awesome. People, where can people find you on social media and stuff? Where can, uh, where yeah. Can so follow? in terms of social media, it's just Instagram and that's at Mitch Jav. Um, my full name was not available, so I had to cough <laughs> off a couple of letters. That's um, funny. but yeah, that's, that's me. Cool. Cool. Um, all right, man. I look forward to chatting in a couple of weeks to our, uh, our world champ over there. So hopefully we'll see. We'll see. Pressure's on. <laughs> All right, people, if you enjoyed this episode with Mitch, give it a like. Don't forget to follow him on Instagram. Show him some support as he closes out the season in a couple of weeks. And thank you again, and we'll see you guys in the next one.